Warning, ski base jumping is extremely dangerous. It can cause life-changing injuries or death. Don't be like this guy, don't die. I personally endured a brutal crash and very difficult recovery, which you can learn from by watching my documentary Super Frenchie, available on Amazon Prime. I do not encourage you to ski base jump, but I hope this video will help you do it safely if you decide to do so. Please do not attempt ski base jumping unless you're an expert skier and an expert base jumper. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Bonjour, I'm professional skier and base jumper Mathias Giraud, aka Super Frenchy, and today I'm taking you guys ski base jumping on one of my favorite clips. Right here, it's 325 feet. I'm gonna exit above the, the ramp that you see, clear the ledge. It's 400 feet to impact, have a beautiful flight down, and then right there on a frozen lake. I'm gonna show you guys how to manage your gear while ski base jumping skins, crampons, poles, what kind of gloves to use, things like that. And uh, yeah, you guys will be able to hop on the ride with me. So let's get going. We're gonna climb all the way up there. Okay, let's prep our gear because we got a lot of stuff going on. First, I can take off my skis. So this is a custom bag that Tuli made, which is awesome. It's got a waterproof insert, but I do not want to get any water on my parachute. So it's always nice to just put on your shell, just keep everything dry. I still have my skins on my skis. I always put my glove on to turn around my ATK binding, because when it snaps on your fingers, it doesn't feel good. Cool, with this. Now, peel off the skin, secure your ski. So kind of make like a little crease right in the middle. Let's say the wind's coming from behind, so protect yourself from the wind. Kind of line it up and you can see with the writing in the skin if you align or not. And then you can just like that slide your hand and the skin is almost perfect. It's good enough to store it for now and then when you get home, reopen it and let them dry. All right, next, what do we have? So I got my parachute, keep it dry on my shell. Then I got a hat, goggles, ski base jumping gloves. So I can't use gloves too thick because then I can't pull my parachute. Then I got a radio. I have two heli straps and I'm going to show you guys why I carry two heli straps. I have all this gear. I gotta be self-sufficient in the mountains. Gear management is probably one of the most complex things in ski base jumping, just because you got a lot of moving parts, a lot of pieces of gear, and uh, it can be tricky to carry all your gear in the mountains to be able to jump safely. Okay, hey, take off my crampons. So I put the bottom on bottom, so this way the spikes are against each other, so I can't really hurt myself, it kind of helps streamline it and also not tear my crampon bag. Cool, so now, crampons are secured, bottom on bottom. Put my crampon bag. So this is good for now. I'll leave that here with the two straps and I'll show you later what I'm gonna do with this. Then, goggles. So I like to put on my goggles uh, as early as possible when I'm gearing up, simply to uh, get myself used to the tint of the lens that I'm gonna be using based on the conditions. Sunglasses, extra gloves to store away. These are the gloves that I jump off with. And jump with. Then I get my hat, I'll show you what I do with that. So it's nice to carry a trucker just because you get fried in the mountains and uh, it's always nice to be protected. Radio, I'll turn it on already, so that's good. So skins, it's tricky for ski base jumping. You can have two options, either put them in your stash bag, stash bag is the, the bag used to carry the parachute, or I can actually put my stash bag in, and poke my skins in the front and put my jacket over it so they're nice and flat. 
The last option you can do, I've done it before. I'm not always a big fan of it, but you can always, when you have mountaineering pants, you can just stuff them down your pants like that. The part that I don't like with this is that you have bulk in your pants around your knees, but the nice part is you don't have bulk on your upper body, so it's not a bad storage placement. Are those skins in your pants, Matthias, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> These are skins in my pants to go with my foreskin. It was feeling a little lonely. So, cool. Probably good right there. So, yeah, I could just keep with that. A little bulky, but not too bad. Next. So my parachute is packed. If you open a parachute, people always think you pull a cord. You don't pull a cord. You throw a little parachute called a pilot chute. So you throw this thing out, it catches air, then it's gonna pull on this bridle, which is gonna pop these two pins and pull the parachute out. All this happens in about a second and a half. Uh, obviously, I'm not, I've repacked my parachute yesterday, it's good to go but I generally repack my pilot chute before every jump. So this way there's no uh, bad memory, you know, fabric memory, so it takes a little extra time to open and inflate. By repacking it, you're guaranteeing that it's gonna inflate right away. Make sure you don't get any snow in there, or when you jump in the summer, you don't wanna get twigs or anything that could get caught in the mesh, as it could hinder the inflation process of your pilot chute. Cool. This, you grab on this and you throw that whole thing out. So I like to keep this nice and firm and tight. Some base jumpers have it kind of big and loose floppy, it works for them. I personally don't like it. I like to have something firm, especially because I'm jumping with gloves. I wanna feel that I have the pilot chute in my hand. Nice pilot chute, it's perfect. All right, so this is a lightweight parachute. You can tell it's got like a little more of a streamlined harness, it's very light. I use this parachute specifically for ski mountaineering, ski based missions, because it's just lighter. So I always put my batteries after taking my GoPro out, because if I leave the battery inside the bag, something might press on the button and turn the GoPro on, and then you'll lose all your battery by the time you get to what you want to film. So I like to jump with a GoPro Max, because it's a 360 camera, you can shoot every single angle. The less cameras I have on me, the less of a snagging hazard it could be. And it's also why I have a camera facing on the left, because my pilot chute is on the right. So when I pull, it's clear and it can't really catch anything on this side. Unless I get unstable and then wrap myself around it, which is why you, <laughs> you gotta stick it and, <laughs> and not lose your balance in the air. So a lot of people say ski base jumping is not really skiing, it's more base jumping, but I think it's more skiing than base jumping because you have to control your skis, not only when you ski, when you jump, but also throughout the air. You're gonna have relative wind, you're gonna have forces pushing your skis around, you gotta control your stability. So you have to control your skis all the way through the deployment of the parachute so you don't get your feet tangled in the lines or things like that. So it's important to be an expert skier if you're gonna do a ski base jump. Since I put my skins in my pants, I have room in my stash bag for the extra gloves. Just throw them here, that's good. So, we get a lot of straps around, things like that. I have a friend who died because he pulled on a strap sticking out instead of his pilot chute. So I always want to make sure that there's no strap showing. If I have a big bib kind of pant, I, I even put it around it, right here. So this one's not a snagging hazard, this one could be. So I just loop them like that. And you see any other straps, Wes? Uh, oh, okay. I, those ones. Which ones? These ones that are used to for your ice axes. Uh, so these you are fine, because so the jacket's gonna come over. Okay. So these are gonna be under. So now I'm gonna put on my rig. But I don't wanna get it wet. I don't ever set my parachute on snow. No strings, Wes? No strings. 
Cool. So you can open it like that, which is nice when you ski base jump. Especially when you're gearing up on steep terrain, kind of hard to put your legs through the leg straps. So that's one, and that is two. Don't forget your chest strap. If you have to rappel into your line, you have sling attachment points here. So you could put like a, you can get a sling from Squirrel, but these are anchoring points if you need to do a rappel. So now, tightening the harness. So make an even platform. So your feet are on the same level. And then, tighten your leg straps and make sure they're about the same length. And why do I do that? Because if one side is tighter than the other, that tension will be passed onto the lines and will make your parachute turn. So you want your gear to be symmetrical. Radio. I just put it in my side pocket in my jacket so it's easy to access, but it's not hanging out. So today, because I have a lot of gear and a lot of stuff in my pockets, that's why I put my climbing skins in my pants, so I have less bulk on my upper body. You kind of want to be loose and agile when you ski, right? You don't want to be constricted. My hat, well... The stash in my head. <laughs> now, the crampon pocket. I don't really like jumping with it, but if I don't have a choice, and I'm gonna do it today just to show you guys, but that's why I carry two straps. Cool. Now my crampons are secured, and it doesn't prevent me from bending my knees when I ski. I'm gonna throw my skis on. I like the way my edges feel. I always keep a right ski and a left ski, so they're always the same. Now, I'm clipped in my bindings. These are the Free Raider 15 Evo from ATK. You do not need to lock them if they're adjusted properly. They're extremely bomber tech bindings. But to be safe on the ski base jump, I do not ever want a ski to come off. So I always lock my bindings. Don't do this at the ski resort, but only do that for ski base jumping. All right, then gloves. So I have thin gloves from Lecky that have the trigger system in there. What do I do when ski base jumping with poles? So when I'm climbing, I have my poles at 135. When I ski normal, I have them 125. When I ski steep stuff or I ski base jump, I have them at 115. The reason is the smaller they are, the less chances I have them, you know, getting tangled in my lines or doing something weird with them. Oh, what a loser! Good! As I approach the edge of the cliff, I put both poles in one hand. And I like to use my climbing poles adjustable so I can feel where the middle of the pole is. Because this way, my baskets can't get anywhere near my lines. So I'm gonna ski down, jump off, pull my parachute, parachute opens. I can still steer my lines like that if I need to turn around quickly or if I'm opening facing the cliff. But if I'm opening and I'm in the right direction, then Fly out, clip in the right pole, clip in the left pole, and I don't have to do anything to hold my poles, they're just in my gloves. And I grab my, my toggles, I can steer my parachute and land safely, and I don't leave anything behind. Last but not least, buckle your boots. Then we're good to go. Let's go ski base jumping. All right. <laughs> Ready? Chest strap, leg strap, which one will probably shoot. Three, two, one, dropping. <laughs> Beautiful!
I hope you guys learn more about ski base jumping today. I know not many people are gonna ski off a cliff with a parachute, but it was a pleasure to be able to share the experience with you. I hope it was valuable and uh, perhaps it will help you in your own endeavor. Thanks for watching guys. Hit the subscribe button for out there. And see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to contribute to upcoming projects, Super Frenchy hats are available for sale on my website, superfrenchy.com, and every dollar raised will help finance upcoming trips and expeditions. I wouldn't want you to break a bone, but if you do, you can borrow one of mine. <laughs>